Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of All The Mods 6. How are you guys doing today? How is life? In between the episodes I have updated the pack and now we have the ability to craft all the creative items using an ATM star. These are the new recipes and we don't need to make the creative essence in order to make the creative items anymore. But here is the most fun part of the update, the recipe of the ATM star. I'm going to ignore the fact that we have to find a lightning dragon just to make these blocks. But we also need to get into every single mod in order to make all of these parts. Anyways, that was the update. I'm missing a fence. But I'm not going to fix it because I'm sure it's going to play with your OCD. So what is the plan for today's episode? Well, we are actually going to try and make the SPS chamber so that we would be able to get antimatter and get antimatter pellets. It doesn't have any uses in order to make the creative items, but at least it has a few uses in mechanism itself. Besides, it looks amazing. Also, we made the solar panels for a reason, and that reason was to get antimatter. So let me start building and I'll be right back. I went up ahead and added a very small extension to our base for housing the solar panels as well as the SPS chamber. I also went up ahead and made another fission reactor over here which is exactly the same design that we have over there in order to provide our SPS chamber with polonium. We could have hooked up the SPS chamber to the old reactor but I wanted to have a viewing platform so that I can see how it works. In order to make the SPS chamber we need just over a stack of SPS casings and a few ports. And just in case you're wondering we need one plutonium pellet in order to make the casing and four polonium. We have 206 plutonium pellets and I think there should be a little bit over here. Yeah, 18. So the only thing that we're missing is polonium. That's it. And since we don't need any plutonium, can we disconnect you? Okay, I think we're good. We have plenty of fuel. Let us make some polonium. You should also remember that in order to make one polonium pellet, we're also going to have one bucket of nuclear waste. This is why I had to add a few more barrels. Each barrel can hold 64 buckets, so I think we should be good. I gathered a little bit of polonium and we have a decent amount of SPS casings. So let us make the chamber together. That is the shape that you have to make. It's almost a circle and you have to repeat it on all six sides. We need to sleep, cause solar neutron activators do not work during night time. Anyways, I was going to try and explain that it is exactly the same way that you make a fusion reactor from mechanism. So we just go something like this, and there you go. Oh wait a minute, I have enough in order to finish it? Maybe. Well, I can't finish it because I don't have enough in order to make the ports, but so far so good. I would say that is not that bad. We are left with 8 blocks. And in the meanwhile, did we get more polonium? 27. Very good. One thing that you should remember is that this is the frame itself, now we need to make the sides. For that we can use either reactor glass or structure glass. Which in this case since I had a lot of reactor glass, we're going to go with that. So how does the chamber actually work? We need to have a fission reactor, we give it fissile fuel, we will get nuclear waste. We need to process that nuclear waste in a solar neutron activator in order to get polonium. Polonium gas has to go inside the SPS chamber so that we get antimatter. And the antimatter which is also a gas has to go inside a chemical crystallizer so that we just get one pellet. And if you look at the conversion rates for each 10 buckets of fissile fuel, you will only get one millibucket of antimatter. So it's a conversion ratio of 10,000 to 1. Anyways, the way that I have it set up is that we have our fission reactor over here. The waste goes inside the nuclear waste barrel and then goes inside the solar neutron activator which does have access to the sky. This is going to make us polonium and now we have to take that polonium and put it inside the chamber. We also need to have one more port in order to extract the antimatter so I'm going to put it on the bottom. And for processing the antimatter itself you're going to need a supercharged coil. You need a minimum of one but I'm actually going to make, I don't know, four in total because it does look really cool. And you can just put it on any side. Oh, and by the way, for extracting the antimatter, this one has to be set to output. If we get two more blocks, I think our chamber is almost done. Yes, exactly. It's almost done. We just have to cover the top. Oh, and by the way, the bottom does not have to be casing. It can be glass. But I just thought it might look a little bit better. Our multi-block structure has formed. We have the super critical phase shifter. Nice. So the final step that we have is that we need to extract that antimatter that we are eventually going to produce and put it inside a chemical crystallizer, which is going to give us the pellets. We also need to provide tons of power for the supercharged coils and I'm actually going to disable the limit. It's charging up. So I'm assuming if I have not messed it up, we should be good to go, which I have actually messed it up. This should be for waste and this one should be for steam. Just for testing purposes, let us start with one tank. I'm going to set you up over here and you're going to export fuel. Cool. We have a decent supply of fuel, let's give it a test. Oh, and by the way, you might notice that I'm not using any waste barrels over there except the one. That's because if you use the antimatter chamber, you're not going to get any waste. And that is the whole point of having the SPS chamber, because then you can run your reactors indefinitely. So, let us see if it works. You do work. Nothing has exploded. 
I thought you're going to extract it automatically, but I'm guessing no. And we're also going to increase the burn rate to 10 for now. Let us do this one more time. Yes, it's working. It's making us antimatter at an incredibly garbage speed of 0.001 millibuckets. Why do I have waste? Oh, it's just 10 millibuckets. Okay. So I'm assuming everything works fine. Let us hook it up to our fuel production and let it run. This configuration card was the best thing that you guys taught me. For transferring the fissile fuel, I think what we are going to do is that we're going to have a quantum entangler porter over here, and I'm going to set a channel for fissile fuel. And it's nice, you have air. <laughs> oh, you're on output. My bad. Good. Now you have fissile fuel. And I'm going to also put a second quantum entangler porter just over here. And we have plenty of fuel. Perfect. And since we have a decent supply of fissile fuel, I have increased the efficiency and now we are generating antimatter. Although you should remember that is going to take a bajillion years. I like gauges. Now that we are done with making antimatter, there are a few points that I would like to mention. You can put the solar panels in the end dimension and they will work 24-7. Personally, I'm not a fan of doing that, but if you want to do that, that is an option. Also, I wanted to go with a far bigger setup, but the problem is that they have changed the recipes and antimatter has lost its importance. So we no longer need hundreds of them, we just need, I don't know, like 5 or 6 pellets. And this is why I decided to go with a smaller setup which has like 75 fuel rods. Another thing that I would like to mention is that the pattern that you put the fuel rods is actually very important. So with the first reactor I actually went with a checkerboard pattern, right? And in the second reactor I went with a pattern like this which resulted in very high temperatures and I could not burn fuel faster than 25 millibuckets per tick. I did change it back to checkerboard pattern and now we should be able to process fuel at a much higher rate. This is something that Rage also mentioned in one of his comments on my previous video but uh... I didn't know that. You see, even at 50 millibuckets per tick, we're still in the green zone. And just in case you're curious, our supercritical phase shifter is consuming 13 million RF per tick. And so far, how are we doing on antimatter? Really bad. We have 76 millibuckets, we need 1000 for just a single pellet of antimatter. Anyways, I also need a little bit more polonium, so we're going to run this reactor as well. And after I have enough, I'll be right back. I have gathered a decent supply of polonium and there are a few things that we need to do. First off, the ore miner. This is an ionite ore miner and it is the only one which is generating us ores. We have another one in the end which is tier 8 and it is only generating us crystals. The problem is that whenever you reach 300,000 of each crystal, technically you don't need crystals anymore, right? So let us turn off the reactor because I want to go to the end and it's not very good to leave it unloaded. What I basically want to know is that if we put the ore miner in the end, will we still get resources? Yes, it seems that we're getting the same ores that we were getting in the overworld. So instead we are going to import everything into our QIO network and we are going to use this one for mining ores. Oh, we are getting biotite. Is it used for anything? Nope. Nothing. And the fun part is that we are also getting star metal ore. One thing that I wanted to check was to see if we are getting glowstone and nether quartz, which it seems that we do. So ladies and gentlemen, this is our new ore miner. We also have a resource miner which is mining us mica. We don't need mica anymore, so we can turn you off and take you home. Yeah, I was correct. We have 18,000 mica. We don't need it at all. So here is something very important. We are getting a lot of ores and we are getting them faster than we can process it. We have so many machines over here and if I add more machines, I think it's going to cause lag. There was a very nice comment on the previous episode that why don't you put all your lag creating machines inside a compact machine? So that is what we are going to do in order to reduce lag. You can just craft them? Really? And it works? It does seem to work. You don't need the projectors anymore. I have literally disconnected everything, we just wait for them to finish processing and then we will see if the lag is any better. Personally, I'm not a fan of sticking everything inside a compact machine, but the issue is that they have changed the recipe for the creative items and if we want to get the old mod star, we're going to need a lot more machines. So I have to be slightly realistic and think about the lag. I think in total we're going to have two compact machines and we're going to set them up in this room. And I just realized I said two and I only had one. So here is the second one. It's just that we're getting tons of ores, I don't know how to process all of that. Is my antimatter ready? Nope, but almost done. This room was slightly damaged when the reactor exploded, so I thought in the meantime that our antimatter is going to be ready, I might as well fix it. And I'm hoping it is ready. Yes, one pellet. Because I want to go into a compact machine and I wanted to turn off the reactor. With antimatter pellets, we can craft only 4 items. One of them is the antiprotonic nucleosynthesizer, which at a cost of antimatter can transform items into different items, which is not very useful for us because I'm not going to spend 2 millibuckets of antimatter 
to get, I don't know, like one block of redstone. We can also use it in order to have creative flight in our mecha suit, as well as a teleportation unit for the mecha tool. But the main reason that I wanted it was to make the super massive QIO drive, which is relatively expensive. You need 350 of the atomic alloy. Holy. It's not expensive, it just takes a bit of time to make. In the meantime, I have also made 8 more ultimate induction cells, so let us install them. We have a capacity of 41 trillion RF. That's nice. Really nice. The supermassive QIO drive is almost ready. Yes, that is 16 billion items. And I'm actually going to use it for our ores. So let us go to the compact machine and see how much space do we have. It's actually not that bad, it's 13 by 13. Most of the machines have been transferred, the lag is gone. It actually took me far longer than I was expecting, but I did manage to set up everything. It's a very ridiculous system, but we are handling every single ore that we're getting. And this is how fast we are generating resources, which is not that bad. I have modified this place a little bit, and you might notice that the bottom of the compact machine is actually down there. And just in case you didn't know, if you have your personal shrinking device and hold sneak and right click, you will have a new spawn point. Cause normally when you modify the floor, you're still going to spawn at your default location and well, if you have modified the floor, then you're gonna suffocate. Another thing which is new in 1.16 is that apparently you have to chunk load your compact machine. Cause I don't know, in 1.12, if it was in a chunk loaded area, it was still chunk loaded. Nobody cared. Anyhow, the entire point of having the supermassive QIO drive for ores is that we don't have to void anything anymore. We can just keep it in our system and whenever we need it, we can use it. Also, I made another resource miner which I put it under our mob farm so that we get some resources. And by resources, I mean stone, cobblestone, dirt, and obsidian. And even andesite. I was also checking out the recipe of the star and it might look very complicated at first, but it's actually not as bad as you would think. We just need to do a little bit of planning in order to get the items which are more difficult and time consuming to get. For example, you might notice that we are going to need something called a Wither's Compass, and that requires Wither Honeycomb blocks. If you come to your quest book, it has been updated and it will tell you that you can craft some of the bees, the rest you have to breed, and some of them you have to mutate. We are going to need a decent amount of unobtainium as well as all the modium in order to get the all the mod star itself, so we kind of have to do bees. Cause honestly speaking, this will never pay off. I have already made an elite centrifuge in order to process honeycombs because this was relatively cheap, it just requires netherite. And I have been processing some of the honeycombs that I got from my villagers over here. You might notice that every time that we do a trade, we only get 30. And in order to start making an apiary, that is going to take a bajillion years. Yes, we are going to start with an apiary because we have the resources and this is not sky bees. So I was thinking how else can we get honeycombs in very large quantities. One of them obviously is mystical agriculture, but there's also candle berries. And in order to get candle berries, we can use our market guy. Oh, there was a hole. I have to fill it in. We just buy two stacks and that should be more than enough. And I think the most logical thing that we can do is to put it inside a phytogenic insulator and get a ton. I forgot to mention that the main reason that I'm going with candleberries and not mystical agriculture is that it's far easier to duplicate the seeds. Cause you get almost three each time and I really want this to be over in a few minutes, not four hours. That wasn't bad. And I would say that is a decent amount of honey. How much does it cost us to get a tier four apiary? Ooh, that is expensive. 21,000 honeycomb. I honestly don't think that is too bad. We can actually do this. I know that you can actually install an augment so that the phytogenic insulator goes on a loop, but I mainly use them in order to get wood. And I don't want them to go on a loop. We need 21,000 honeycomb. So far we have, I don't know, 950. We also need 48 more nether stars, so let us order 50. Putting bottles manually is a pain. Can I put a hopper? Yes, it does work. This might be a very stupid way of doing things, but it's actually working. So far I did manage to gather almost 3000 honeycombs. And we do have a decent amount of candle berries. So again, I have to do a very small explanation for those of you who don't know. The tier 1 beehive that you have from resourceful bees is basically the same beehive that you have in vanilla Minecraft. From beehive tier 2 to beehive tier 4, the only difference is that you can have more bees inside and they are going to work slightly faster. 20%. So you can have a maximum of 16 bees, but each one of those bees is going to make you only one honeycomb. However, once you get to the apiary tier 1, instead of one honeycomb, you will get 8. Tier 2 will give you 16. A tier 3 will give you 4 honeycomb blocks. And a tier 4 is 50% faster and gives you 8 blocks. So this is why I'm trying to rush towards the tier 4 and I'm not going to bother myself with the beehives. I'm hoping that the explanation that I just gave you made sense and you would understand why I'm trying to rush towards the tier 4 apiary. Anyways, long story short, it's better to grind for 1 hour in order to get the tier 4 apiary 
rather than spending days in order to get all the beehives. You see, we are almost at 4000. I do have to process a decent amount in order to get the honey bottles, but it's okay. I was thinking maybe we can have a little bit of automation over here so that I don't have to craft the honey blocks manually. So we just add a filter to the pipe for honey bottles. And if by any chance I get at least one? No, that was my bad. We were getting it. It was just too fast. Anyways, we just can make a recipe for honey blocks. I can have a drawer for bottles. And we can just import it back into the centrifuge. It does look terrible, but it does work. While we are waiting for resources, we can use our time efficiently and focus on some of the bees. We are getting into this mod and there are a few bees that we need. One of them is of course the withered bee because that is going to give us the withered honeycomb which we need in order to make the all the mod star. And we also need to get the unobtainium and all the modium bees so that we can make this block which is used also in the all the mod star. It is a very complicated process but we are going to start with copy which has a funny name and then we have to breed it with the lava bee so that we get the stoned bee which has a funnier name. And after we got the stoned bee we have to breed it with the quartz bee so that we get gold. And gold can be mutated to netherite which then has to be mutated into a dragon bee but we will leave that for later on. So long story short, we need to start crafting three of the bees, Cubby, Quartz and Spooky. We are going to start with Cubby because uh, I kind of like his name. Oh, wait a minute. You can be useful. Oh, you're too slow to be useful. <laughs> Don't even work. It's triple compressed cobblestone and I need eight of that. Cool. Oh, and by the way, we also need a dragon scale. And I'm assuming if I have not messed up anything, that should be Cubby. Yes, Cubby is ready. And since I like him, you're gonna stay over here. Actually, there is a chance that he's going to die, so we just put him in a jar. Pookie Bee is not that bad, we just need bone ash, which I have plenty for some reason. And I'm not sure, if all of them are going to require a dragon scale, uh, maybe we have to fight the ender dragon again. And we don't need the button. Ladies and gentlemen, Spooky Bee. Come back here, come back here. So you are off the list as well, and now we need quartz. It's a crazy recipe, it needs a triple compressed quartz. That is literally 23,000 quartz. What a jerk. I mean, we have 400,000 quartz, but still, that's a lot for a bee. We are still crafting. It's been a while. That has been the most expensive bee that I have ever crafted. We had around 12,000 candleberries. That should be, I don't know, 4,000 honeycomb? Yes, exactly 4,000. The reason that the number of honeycombs is not actually going up is because I also need honey blocks. But if we want to look at the recipe, we're only missing 330 honey blocks and 17,000 of you. Which is not that bad, we also need grass. As far as I know, there is no easier way of getting grass other than using the conjuration catalyst. It just doubles your grass. I think that's enough. We have 1,700, maybe not. Because I also use grass in order to make turf, so it doesn't hurt to have more. I just put every single honeycomb that we had inside the centrifuge and I'm hoping that should be enough honey blocks. Okay, the process just ended. How much are we missing? 120. Okay. It's okay. It's going to take a while, but at the end of the day, it's going to be worth it. You know what? We are relatively filthy rich. I can afford a copy. I mean, I did afford a copy. I can afford an extra copy. He's going to be our new pet and I'm going to put him inside our control room. Be happy. Do you need a flower? Cobblestone. Here is your cobblestone. I think Cubby is kind of stupid. Maybe we need to make him a house? Okay, I have just noticed that we can make a bee nest from vanilla Minecraft and the recipe is not that bad. I need 8 buckets of honey. I know it's a very stupid thing to do because we're extremely short on honey, but it's for Cubby. So you make it like this? That was instant. There you go. Here is your home. I have a wonderful news. Cubby is happy. I might have done a slight miscalculation on how much time it was required in order to gather all the honeycombs because it took me just over 2 hours, but I think we should be okay. Are we? 800 more, okay. Well that is 120 of it, and the rest I just have to wait. And I'm assuming for the moment we don't need the centrifuge anymore. Because at the end of the day I have like 5 or 6 bees that I want to stick inside the apiary and I have none of them. But we will, don't you worry. Oh, copy juice! He's in it, right? 269. We are very close. I think we should be done. Yes, finally. Oh, we need almost 6,000 sticks. It's okay. There might have been a shitty way of duplicating honey using cyclic as you guys have been telling me during Skybees. But you should always remember, duplicating is 5% less cheaty than going into creative. At least this is my tier 4 apiary. Legitimately. Anyway guys, I think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode. Me and Kabi would like to thank you so much for watching and we hope you enjoyed it.
till the next one bye bye